Episode 113, Wandering Eyes. Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of intimacy. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. And we actually have a special listener yes. sitting with us tonight while we podcast. I'm going to totally embarrass her right now, but my mom is sitting here. Um, so this is the first time we've done it in front of a live audience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. An audience of one. An audience of one. A live studio audience sitting right here in our home-based kitchen. <laughs> right. So we so, thank you for being here. Welcome, Mom. And you probably won't hear her talk. She just wants to h hang out. But if she has any words, she will chime in on Elisa's mic. So um, we are right in the middle of spring break. That's why my parents are or out here. It just started today. Well, technically, if you ask the kids, it started Friday at 1240 when they get out of school. All right. That That's the technical start of spring break. Sure. Um, but yeah, my parents are out here visiting from Ohio. And so we've already, you know, done the beach and done in and out. And, um, you know, we've got this whole list of San Diego fun things to be doing this week. So um, in the midst of all that, we are carving out some time uh, to podcast and to be with all of you. And we hope that if you're having spring break this week, that you're having a wonderful time with your kids. If it's not spring break for you, well, we just hope you're having a wonderful time. Yeah. So... Um, what do you want to, any housekeeping type stuff that we need to, before we jump into the topic? Into the topic, come and find us at Stitcher on Stitcher radio. We, uh, we really just dig this you guys. And you know, what a wonderful way to take our message and our podcast everywhere and anywhere you want to go on your mobile device. No need anymore to go to iTunes, download it, put it onto an iPod or any other MP3 device. I mean, you can just literally just listen anywhere you want our show and many, many more. And we will make sure to have a link in here. It's just wonderful. I was out today just working and, you know, I, I just happened to be just hanging out. I was like, you know what? I just want to listen to something and open up Stitcher Radio, my app, and got one of my podcasts that I like to listen to, which is my buddy Pat Flynn at the Smart Passive Income. And just hung, hanging out, listening to Pat as I was working. And you guys heard me gush about Stitcher last week. You know, I just, I can't say enough. For me who doesn't do all the extra steps to listen to the podcasts um, in that I don't download and, you know, go and, you know, go to my iTunes and download and put it on my phone. I need it to be easy. Stitcher, I tell I was talking to Tony before we got on the air and I was telling him, you know what, I listen. In fact, I listened to Pat's um, Smart Passive Income last week when I was getting my nails done because it popped up on what others are listening to. And I thought, oh, you know what, I know Pat. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and listen to his show. And so the they've made it so user-friendly and so easy. And you would actually think we were probably getting some kind of sponsorship from them the way we talk about it. But we just both love the app and how easy it makes, not just like Tony said, to listen to our show, but to listen to a whole variety of podcasts. I mean, you can search by topic, you can search by, um, they give you suggestions for what other people that like a particular show are also listening to. They update your favorites. Um, you know, kind of like when you've got an update on your app, you get the little number in a circle letting you know how many updates Stitcher does the same thing with your show. So when you log in, it automatically, will ask you, do you want to update your shows for the most recent, um, the most recent podcasts or episodes? And so it just automatically does it for you. I right. love that. Mm -hmm. Love that. So that is really good. What's going on with, um, our book and Kindle? Yeah. So we have now released our book in Kindle strip <laughs> down 13 keys to unlocking intimacy in your marriage. You can get that by searching strip down at Amazon. It is nine 99 and it is the only digital format of our book you can now get. We have taken down our ebook, we have taken down our audiobook, and you can grab it though in Kindle version. You can also still grab our softback version. Mm -hmm. And you can order that through the website oneextraordinarymarriage.com and we can sign that for you and ship that out to you as well. Yeah, we're super excited. You know, so many of you have asked us over the last year or so to to get a Kindle version. Mm -hmm. That, um, and we know it's been a little bit, a little bit longer coming than some of you would have liked, but we're glad that to see such a positive response that we've already received from those of you that have picked up the Kindle copies. Um, and you know, we're just excited to be moving into that, that digital version with the book. So that's, 
That's really good. Mm-hmm. That's really good. So, um, you, you wanted me to bring up a surprise that you got last week. I do. Oh, you just messed with my mic. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going in and out here. Woo. I know. It's like I the know. twilight zone. And if, if, if you guys are hearing some funky audio between Elisa and I, let me know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out here tonight. Oh, sounds good to me. All right. So your surprise. So my surprise, it was, what was it? Tuesday, okay, Wednesday, I, Thursday of last week? It had to have been Thursday. It, it must have been Thursday. It had to have been Thursday because my parents flew in on Friday and mm-hmm. Wednesday I had a networking group. Right. So definitely Thursday. And I ended up dropping off the kids at school early, like 740. They, they wanted to be dropped off. So I ended up dropping them off. Mm-hmm. And Elise and I were talking about, you know, taking the lead. It was her days to take the lead. Can I, can I just back up and say that we weren't talking about it? You were just being very specific in reminding me. Right. It, it wasn't really a conversation. It was more like, I, I want you to realize that today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday, and then we have Friday. So one of those three days is your day to take the lead. Right. That, that was more the way the conversation went. Was that the way it went? Yeah, it was It was not a two-sided back and forth thing. <laughs> but we'll call it a conversation for kicks. So, All right, we'll call, we'll call it a conversation for kicks. Well, and anyways, I dropped off the kids and I had to be at a job. I, I had some, no, Thursday morning, Thursday I was working at, from the home. Mm-hmm. I was going to work at home all day. We have a bunch of new stuff coming up. We're writing a an a monthly or bi-monthly article for LA Family Magazine. Uh, we have some other stuff coming up. So Thursday was just going to be my, you know, one extraordinary marriage day and some other things I got rolling and moving on. And so I roll in and on the garage door, there's a little picture, an arrow, an arrow. drawn on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And then there's some more drawn arrows on the floor. Mm-hmm. And then there's a big heart on our door on a piece of paper. And I walk into our bedroom and Elisa's there naked. Okay, I, I have to stop you right here. <laughs> Only because my mom's sitting at the table. <laughs> this, this is perhaps, you know, I mean, you guys think about it. You know, I'm almost... You're 37. I'm, I'm 37, almost 38. Looking hotter than ever. Yeah, but I, I don't know that I've yeah. ever had the... I'm glad you know that. Well, you tell me all the time. Yes. Um, so it's just kind of one of those moments, you know, where you're sitting at the table talking about having sex with your husband. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep telling the story. I mean, the story. Lisa, Lisa's naked in her high heels. Uh, everybody remember Tony's shoe fetish? I, I have my shoe fetish. I love Elisa and her high heels. And so it was a welcome surprise. Mm-hmm. I was pleasantly surprised. Let's Candles just say that. and everything. Candles and everything. And we just had a very fun morning. And it wasn't like we sat there, made love for hours on end. I mean, it was just... A typical, I wouldn't say typical, but it was just a, a normal duration. Let's just put it that way. An average duration. It wasn't a quickie. It wasn't super long. It was average, but it was fun. <laughs> Period. End of story. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I have to say, you know, it was one of those things that kind of came to me. I mean, sometimes you just got to seize the moment. And it was one of those things where both kids decided at the last minute they wanted Tony to take them to school. So I know that I had um, probably about eight minutes to get the house and myself completely ready. So the minute the garage door closes, oh, you just lost me. No, nope. Um, The minute the garage door closes, I'm like trying to find the candles and I'm trying to find the notepad so I can leave the hearts. And of course, wouldn't you know it? I mean, you've heard about our wall sconces. Um, every single candle in our wall sconce had burned down to the, down to the, you know, there was nothing left. So then I got to go find new candles, change out all the candles, then hop into bed, turn on the heat. So I'm not freezing. He comes home. He's like, why is it so hot in here? <laughs> right. You know? And I'm thinking, well, cause if I'm going to be naked, it's gotta be warm. I mean, right. Let's face it, ladies, you're not going to be freezing and you know, laying on top of the covers. Just it, was, it was bad waiting. enough. My hands were cold. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, yeah. But we got over that. We got over that. But you know, it's just one of those times where, you know, we had an unexpected morning. And so, you know, we, we tell you guys all the time, you know what, take advantage of that. If there's that afternoon where the kids aren't home, unexpectedly, unexpectedly make love. Right. You know, if, if you get that afternoon where everybody happens to be out of the house or, you know, everybody's, the kids are watching movies or he can come home for lunch, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, yes. There are a million and one things on your to-do list. It'll still be there in an hour. 
heck, it'll still be there in 15 minutes. Right. Maybe even four, depending on what you're doing that day. So average quickie, three to seven minutes. There you go. That's that's from you guys. That's you guys telling us that. Are you saying that you're you're? Do you have any specific number in mind for you, or you just? No, I, but them? I remember some time back we we asked that specific question. Yeah. You know, what what would you consider a quickie? And you know, it was anywhere from three to seven minutes. Got it. Okay. So we titled the show tonight "Wandering Eyes." And what's come up just in conversation with folks over the last few weeks is the levels of insecurity Mm -hmm. that a lot of you have in your marriages when you're out to dinner or you're out strolling, you know, along the beach or you're at the mall or whatever. And all of a sudden you notice your spouse looking to the left or looking to the right, noticing, you know, an attractive woman or an attractive man. And, And, you know, we're kind of talking about that that feeling that wells up inside of you and how you respond to that and how it impacts your, your marriage. marriage. Because the reality is, is that there are some incredibly attractive people out there. And at the other side of it, that if your spouse has done something that has broken the trust, mm-hmm. there is a probably a really good reason that you have this feeling going on. Right. And, and, you know, we're talking about the feeling of jealousy, the feeling of insecurity, the feeling of, okay, why is he or she worry. doing that worry? And, you know, how do you, how do you move past that? How do you get yourself in a position to say, okay, you know what? I know that he or she is just admiring, you know, one of God's masterpieces and just is able to leave it at that and move beyond. But how do you get from that, that crazy, I've got a pit in my stomach because that's a very real feeling for a lot of you. And it was a real feeling for Elisa and I for many years in our marriage. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I mean, you or I used to, like, I don't know, bounce around the room like a ping pong ball. Or not ping pong, pinball. <laughs> like a ping pong ball. No, pinball machine. A pinball. Okay. Yeah, and how would that make you feel? It was not good. And why would you not say anything? Because we didn't do too much in the way of confrontation. That was just not our style. Right. We we really um early years of our marriage were very much marked by sweeping under the rug. Right. And so Elisa would shut down. I would shut down. And 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 because of that, I did not know there was an issue with what was going on. Now, internally, I realized, yes, this is not good. And you would think, "Hey, maybe Tony, you should have stopped doing that." But if it's like our kids, something happens. If you don't say anything to them, they're going to do it again and think they can get away with it again and again. Because if you don't get caught the first time, then maybe it wasn't really so bad. Right. And so looking back for myself, man, there, there's a lot of times that I should have just self-regulated what I was doing. But I never was approached by Elisa. She never talked about it to to me. She never said it bothered her. So I would almost pass it off as like, oh, it's just somebody really beautiful. Why can't I look? Now, today I will say there are times when I will look at somebody and go, that is a beautiful woman. That's where it stops. You look once and you're done. It's when you do the two, three, four time you keep looking and you're craning your neck over your shoulder to see this person that there is an issue going on. Okay, so they're all listening to this and going, well, what changed? What changed? Well, yeah. For it us? Begs, it begs the question. I mean, you said that you used to and it had no guilt, remorse, change of action, and all of a sudden now you're like, yeah, I'm one and done. I look and I'm, it's over. So what changed? What changed was the way we approached our marriage. Okay, well, I'm... I'm I'm, you know, pitching it right over the plate to you, honey. <laughs> Thank you very much, honey. You're welcome. It, you know, what ended up happening four years ago when Elisa and I went through our 60 Days of Sex Challenge, that communication, that line of communication really opened up for us. And I think for myself, I really began to understand how in love this gal was for me and how head over heels she was for me, that she was willing to go through this with me for 60 days. 
And it was during that time that I really started to realize, wow, all of the stupid I had done in the years past, you know, and we've talked about those stupid things I've done, you know, looking at pornography, looking at other girls. Sure. You know, these are not things I want to tout that I've, that are good by any stretch of the imagination, you know, and it really hurt our marriage during those years. It really hurt our marriage. And and I think, you know, whichever, if you're on the side where your spouse is the one that's looking, your spouse is the one with the wandering eye, it it does start to erode your marriage, erode Mm -hmm. the foundation because you guys have heard us talk so many times about how, uh, your spouse needs to be your ideal of beauty, of attractiveness. Mm-hmm. And so when you constantly see your husband or your wife looking at, you know, the newest model that's walking down the street or sitting at the next table at a restaurant or, or you know, in the catalog that comes in the mail, whatever it is, you start to question where you rank in their minds. And, and that just eats away at the foundation of your marriage. Mm-hmm. It can't help but not. And, and if you're the one that's doing the wandering eye thing, you need to have a heart to heart with your spouse. You need to come clean about this, that why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And if you're the one who's watching your spouse do this, you need to call them on it. I didn't for many, many years. And that was not a good thing. I don't recommend stuffing that because I know it eats away at you and it, you know, it makes you not want to go out to eat and it makes you not want to go for a walk and it makes you not want to do all these things. Cause you're like, well, what's the point mm-hmm. he or she doesn't really want to be with me. They'd rather be with the leggy blonde or the, you know, hunky guy that's walking down, you know, even though that person's not available, not attainable. It, that's like, you know, the fantasy guy, the fantasy girl, the dream, the, the someone else. Yeah, you know, I'm right here, right now. You know, little Van Halen. Ah, oh, got you, Van Halen. Mm, very um, well done. Every once in a while, you know, I have to put in a plug. You pull it off. I pull it off. You know, little little kudos to Lisa for actually knowing artist and song. Um, it, it's a big, it's a big issue in all of our marriages, insecurities. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, I'm going to just say, you know, prior to four years ago, Elisa and I had a bunch in our marriage. I mean, there were there were those feelings, even on my side of, man, am I living up to what Elisa wants in a husband? And that in itself would bring this feeling of despair and insecurity of, you know, here, here's, here's a great example. When we were living in Loma Linda, California, and that's by like Redland, San Bernardino, sort of in that area, Southern California. Elisa and I would drive. I would drive to LAX, which was about a two and a half hour drive. And Elisa would drive into Orange County, which was about an hour and 45 minutes. Really? It took me that long? Mm-hmm. Remember, yeah. we had to go down the 91 and all that. We used to wake up at 430 in the morning. We'd get in the car. Sometimes we'd carpool. Um, and so I would drop her off at work real early in the morning and I would go on my way. Elisa worked in a predominantly male company. Predominantly doesn't even begin to describe it. The only there, it was a equipment leasing company, and there was on, there were only two other women sales reps out of a team out of a company of about a hundred hundred and twenty five sales reps, mm-hmm. and then the only other women were our administrative support staff. Right. So not a lot of women to interact with when you're on the sales staff because you weren't really hanging out with the admins and you know there were two other women so you either liked them or you didn't you know that kind of thing and so what what would happen and and again this was early on in our marriage this was probably year like 97 98 so two three yeah okay hadn't become followers of christ yet Mm -mm. all right but all i remember every time I'd pick up Elisa, driving home, she'd go out with this guy for lunch, Mm -hmm. name was Steve, and all I would hear her chattering about is this guy, Steve, and all these other guys. Do you think I had some insecurity issues going on? Yeah. 
But here is where I made the big mistake. I would stuff it. I wouldn't talk about it. And those were the years when my pornography was probably some of the highest and most prevalent because I wasn't telling Elisa what was really going on inside of me. See, I was just shoving it and trying to stuff it aside and hopefully she would be able to read my mind and stop doing this, which wasn't happening because as we've talked about before, we don't have ESP. Your spouse will never have ESP, except n- that, except yes. that they will never be able to read your mind. And that is huge. And I know many of you do the same. You want to say something to your spouse, but instead of rocking the boat, you're just shoving it away. Mm-hmm. Or you do blow up, but what ends up happening is, is that the issue that really needs to be talked about, you blurb it out so fast and then you're on to all the other problems that are facing you in your marriage that you don't really talk about the main underlying problem that is hurting you, which is that insecurity. And so what Elisa and I have done, and and for those of you who are listening for the first time, I mean, go back and listen to, all the episodes if you can, because you will hear, and you guys know, it takes a lot of emotional intimacy. It takes a lot of time about, it takes a lot of time talking to each other about what is really bugging you. Mm-hmm. And so for us, it's taken some time, and we have learned, Elisa has spoken up you know, there, there came a point in time, and I don't remember when, but we had this conversation about, you know, does that bother you? Oh, I so remember that. So not on the couch in our living room. Like, I, I, can, I could go back there in a heartbeat to that night because you're just like, okay, I'm done with this. You're, you're like, I'm not, I'm not letting you sulk on this one. I'm not letting you shut down. Mm-hmm. You are going to talk to me. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you sat there. It was, probably, it was probably like seven years ago because it was here in this house. It was here in this house. Um, it was the original couch that we had. Mm-hmm. That, so like, like I know which couch it was. So it's like seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe six. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, that was a turning point. And it's like this conversation about Steve and when I was working for this le- equipment leasing company, we didn't have this conversation until this past weekend when we started talking about this topic. Right. Yeah, that's been 13 years after the fact. And it didn't come up as one of these things like, I'm going to beat you over the head with it now. You know, when he brought it up to me, he was just, you know, he brought it up. Tony brought it up just in, you know, casual conversation. And it's one of those things where I can look back now. And if it was happening today, I'd make different choices just because we we have different boundaries Mm -hmm. around our marriage. Because now I wouldn't want to be having lunch every day with a man. That's not my husband. I mean, the reality is, is that we have seen too many marriages fail because that starts out innocently enough. And then the next thing you know, you're confiding, oh, well, you know, my spouse does this. And then you're, you know, confiding turns into comforting, turns into, oh, no, we, we've, we've crossed the line. And that never happened in my situation, but it would have had the potential to. You know, I mean... The, the, he, yeah, I'm surprised it didn't. He wasn't physically attractive. Okay. Well, I, I mean, th- th- quite honestly, that's probably the only thing that that kept it from from crossing that line mm-hmm. um, because there wasn't a physical attraction there. Right. You know, had at, at that point in time in our marriage, had he been, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to think the answer would be no, but going back to that point in time in our marriage when we were working crazy long hours and commuting an additional two to four hours on top of that so that, you know, you and I would literally be exhausted right? all the time. I mean, I don't know when I would have found the time in between the commute and everything. I mean, it would have been, it had been like lunchtime, I guess. I don't know. Right. But th- so I, that's the only reason I can give for what, I mean, I would love to say that it was because I was an upstanding wife, but I don't know. You know, if I went back to that point in time in my life, I, I don't know. Yeah. No. Um, but it's one of those things where because we have spent the last four years 
very intensely working on our marriage. You know, having those conversations, sitting across from the table from each other at least once a week, which you guys get the benefit of because we, you know, share those conversations with you. But we sit and we, you know, my mom's sitting here. It's kind of funny because I'm like, okay, I'm not even making eye contact with my mom because Tony and I spend this hour looking at each other. Right. Having these conversations. Yes, we, you know, periodically if we're looking something up, we look on Facebook or, you know, at the computers or whatnot. But, but this is our time. And any of you that have come to me with issues in your marriage, you know that like one of the first things I suggest is that you need to sit down and carve out time that one hour a week. I don't know, go out and buy fake microphones and, and headset if you want to be like us and, and just sit across the table and come up with the topic for the night and start talking about it. But I can tell you now, I don't worry about Tony having a wandering eye. You know, we can go out and if he notices a woman, I'm like, yeah, okay, so, you know, fine, look at her. But, you know, I know you're coming home with me. You know, or we have a funny thing like, <laughs> so. And the sex is, I mean, you know, I got to say this though too. As you grow in your marriage and you grow deeper in your physical and sexual intimacy, many of you know it just gets better and better. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a huge turn on. I mean, why would I want to go anywhere else at this point in time? There's no reason for me to look anywhere else. Right. Because Elisa completely and totally satisfies me, not just physically and sexually, but emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. She is, she is the whole package. I feel like we should be quoting that line from Jerry Maguire. Yeah, you complete me. Yes. Um, Tom Cruise segue there. But what I was going to say, the whole thing with the wandering eye, we actually had a funny experience the other night. We're out to dinner, and um, we'd gone out with, to eat soup plantation with my parents. And so... And I'm looking very buff. Uh, okay, so Tony <laughs> recently, I, I've heard him compared to Matthew McConaughey, and, um, oh shoot, i got to look up the other guy. McDreamy, um, Dr. McDreamy from Grey's Anatomy. I can't think of his name. You guys Dips, know who I'm talking ben- uh, Dempsey? Dempsey? I don't know. You guys Dempsey. know. Those of you that watch the show, you know who I'm talking about. So he's been compared to both of those guys recently. And, and I have to admit, he's looking fantastic. The, the longer hair, the bigger muscles. It's working for me. Um, Elisa likes to caress my arms. He's got great arms. Uh, it just it, it is what it is. So guys, a reason to get into shape. Your wife may just uh, totally just dig you. It works. And, and hey, take this from somebody who's been who was a cyclist for so many years, worked on his lower body for so many years. You know, this is this is this isn't from a guy who's been lifting weights for years on end. I've only been lifting weights since six months, eight months, le- maybe six or less. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been lifting them for that long, and it's not like I'm completely cut like some bodybuilder, but at least I got some mass on me now. And. Yeah, and it and doesn't take not, a long time. It either. doesn't take a long time. And it's not to say this is all about the physical. I'm just saying no. my husband's attractive yeah. to me. Which is helpful. And so we're out to dinner. And Tony and I are sitting on the same side because the kids are sitting across from us. My parents are at the end. And um, I happen to look up as he's walking back to the table. We're at Sioux Plantation, buffet style place. And I'm noticing these two girls, yeah, probably late teens, early 20s, sitting off to the side and I can tell from the expression of the girl that is facing me that her girlfriend across the table just said hey check that out and so the girl that is facing me gives Tony the once over head to toe and then back up again and then he turns around and sits down next to me so all of a sudden he is completely unavailable because he just sat down at a table with parents and kids and a wife and poof that just deflated her right there but I have to say as a wife it was very flattering to have the wandering eye come to our table instead of leaving our table. Right. That's a good wandering eye. Yeah. You know, it's coming to our table. But all that's to say is that... That, that I'm hot. <laughs> wow, speechless. <laughs> Folks, I don't even know where to go after that. In case you were wondering, Tony is hot. Spoken <laughs> right from him and not from me. I don't even have to, I don't even have to say it. Uh, um, but all that's to say is that we're at a point in our marriage because we've invested so much time in it that it does not even concern me in the least that those girls were looking at him. In fact, it was kind of funny. It, it, we're still joking about it three days later. Um, 
because that's the first time that I've been out with him since he's really bulked up that I've noticed somebody really giving him, I mean, like she probably like almost had her eyeball fall out because she was looking him up and down so hard. Um, and that's a good thing, but it doesn't bother me because I know that if he caught that, which he hadn't, which is kind of funny too, but I knew that if he caught that, it wouldn't have mattered to him. Maybe a little ego boost. Okay, that's fine. We can all use an ego boost now and again. It, it, it is just taking that ego boost to the next level. Or, or making the conscious choice not to. Right. And that's what's more important to say, you know what? Hey, that was flattering. She looked at me. He looked at me. No big deal. This is not the time to exchange phone numbers. <laughs> right. This is not the time to get into a casual conversation. No, you know, it's like, hmm, that was cool. Move on. I, I, you know, I'm going home to the husband or the wife that loves me, that cherishes me, that honors me, that really only wants to spend time with me, you know, and want, and is only wants to be with me. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you get to that point in your marriage, when you can look at your spouse and say, you know what, I know I'm your one and only. When you, when they have built and poured so much into the foundation of your marriage that you can look in their eyes and have that thought. You know, mm. I don't worry about the fact that, I mean, with Tony's job, he's constantly around single women. It just happens. They have cars. They need their cars fixed. Okay, could he be propositioned? Absolutely. Am I worried about it? No. Right. You know, I mean, we talked about how in the early years, uh, preparing for this podcast, we talked about how in the early years of our marriage, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom. UPS man comes, the mail, you know, I mean, delivery guys. I had I had a buddy many many years ago, man. His his uh, ex wife now UPS FedEx FedEx. Yeah, she was a stay at home mom. Apparently, yeah. she got a lot of deliveries. Mm-hmm. Sure did. Yeah, and so and that's when you don't have that foundation, when you haven't invested the time emotionally and physically, and I'm not talking about sex necessarily. I'm talking about being present with your spouse. It's when you go out to dinner, you are focused on them. You are not focused on every other person in the restaurant. You know, if you're walking down, you know what? Don't like, don't do what Tony said. Don't do the triple quadruple take where you're, you know, you're getting whiplash because your neck's bent so far back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those of you that are working through your insecurities, don't badger them because that's the other thing. You know, they may just do a passing glance that you blow up into, you know... A, a, a big argument that... And a, to a big argument that really was nothing more than, okay, somebody crossed my line of vision. And I am and I looked. I, I'm human. You know, if a beautiful person walks... I mean, it, it's, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a beautiful person. Sometimes you, you people know, just cross our paths. People just cross your paths and you look. It's, you can't always take that as being some sort of sexual innuendo or some sexual advance and that's where you really need to watch out for yourself the person who is insecure and i really would say for those of you who are are dealing with this you know look to jesus Mm -hmm. i mean put that upon him figure out what's happening when are you being triggered you know, give that to Jesus at those moments in time, just like I talked about many, many months ago about my anger issues that I had and how I, and I still to this day, there are times when I get triggered and I just got to go, Jesus, I need to put it upon you. Because if I rely on just me, I'm going to screw up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to screw up. So I'm going to lay it upon you and I'm going to just take a deep breath and I'm going to think this through so I don't overreact. And maybe that's what needs to be happening in your life right now. You need to just be going, Jesus, take this away from me. Mm -hmm. It's just like worrying. It does us no good. Granted, I do it. and, And it's one of those areas for me that I constantly am just going, Jesus, I give it to you. So if there's some insecurity issues and you're talking with your spouse that's the big thing, folks, is you got to be bringing these things up. You can't, like we said, you can't keep hiding it under the rug or shoving it under the rug like we did many years ago. You got to bring them up. And when you're faced with it, you need to be able to say what you need to say. But maybe first and foremost, you just need to say a silent prayer to, you know, hey, I'm struggling. 
and I am going to bring this up to my spouse. Please mm-hmm. be with me. You know, and let your spouse know where you're at. Right, because it goes back to the fact that, you know, sometimes we don't want to bring things up for fear of confrontation, and sometimes we don't know how to bring things up. And, you know, in those times, I'm constant. you know, I'm continuously reminded of Moses um, telling God that he didn't know the words to say to Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. You know, and God said, Moses, you're going to go and lead my people. And Moses like, I, I, I uh, you know, and Moses starts to stutter and can't talk. And he's like, I'm the wrong person. Send somebody else. And, you know, so Moses, um, or God sends help for Moses. And, you know, that same thing is available to us, that same power. You know, whether you need the words to say or you need somebody to come alongside you to help you through this, you know, that helps available, but you've, you've got to be willing to acknowledge that there's an issue and that you're trying to make it better. Not just that there's an issue and you're going to like let things stay at status quo. It's like, no, I, I acknowledge that I have this insecurity issue. I acknowledge that, you know, when you look at another woman, it just makes me go into a frenzy and I don't know how to react. And so I lash out at you and then I, you know, beat you over the head with it for the next two weeks. Um, or, would, or however it manifests itself in your particular situation. Because I know husbands and wives deal with the issue differently. I know how your reactions are all different. But you know what I'm talking about in your marriage. Mm-hmm. You know what happens when you see your spouse look at somebody else. You need to acknowledge that to your spouse. And you need to acknowledge that you're trying to make it better. And then you have to actually work on making that better. Don't just give it lip service. It's like we talked about last week. Do something Make a conscious choice when you start to find yourself in that situation to react differently or to say to your spouse, hey, I'm feeling that feeling. Like, we need to get grounded here because I'm feeling like you're doing it again and I don't want to blow up. And it's okay to say, I don't want to do this behavior, but I feel like I'm going to. You know, because then you can, then your spouse is given the warning. I don't know, get a code word. Um, you know, a touch, a, a code word or something just to say, I think this is going to turn into something. I'm mm-hmm. feeling a little agitated. And then you guys can get yourself out of that situation. But you have to work on it together because if just one of you is trying to fix the insecurities in your marriage, it, it's going to be a challenging road. Right. You need your spouse's support on both sides to make this better. You, you need to make it so that if somebody crosses your path, if you're the one with the insecurities, you're like, yeah, whatever. I know I'm the one he's coming home with tonight. <laughs> you can walk in front of him all you want. And if you're the one that's looking, you need to be like, you know what? I don't need that. I've got the woman or the man that loves me more than anything on my arm, at home, cooking me dinner, you know, working hard for me. I know I've got everything that I need. I don't need or want for anything else because the person that I am married to is my all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a great way to end it. All right. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Hey, pick up strip down Kindle edition. We'd love for you to share it. Uh, it is a part of the lending library, so you can lend it to your friends and family. Once you pick it up, um, it is basically our way of spreading the word, you know, we want you guys to have extraordinary marriages and we know there are times and many of you need something to read. You need to physically be able to read something, take something to bed, share it with your spouse. And that's what stripped down is all about. It's a, he said, she said style written, written by us. And at the end we have questions. We have questions because it's what we have found that has worked for us And for so many other couples, because once you start asking each other questions, once you start taking off the mask, once you start learning more about each other and you get away from the surface talk, how are the kids? How was your day? What's the weather like? We have seen marriages flourish Mm -hmm. and it takes sometimes for folks like you, like us, we need a guide and that's what stripped down is all about. So you can grab it at Kindle. You can grab it at oneextraordinarymarriage.com right here under this podcast. Um, 
other than that, what else we got this week? Anything else that, that's good? Happy Easter. Happy Easter, yeah. That's coming up. I, I don't know if we'll be podcasting next week. Uh, I doubt it. So um, we might not talk to you guys for two weeks. So in that time, have a wonderful Easter. Um, remember what this season is all about. That, um, you know, in order for Christ to come and save us, he had to sacrifice for us. Just remember that sacrifice that, you know, Christ died for everything that you have done, past, present, and future, mm-hmm. and that you are loved um, completely unconditionally by our Lord and Savior, and that there is nothing that you could do, whether it's the insecurities in your marriage or wandering eyes or anything that would remove that love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you, honey. All right, you guys, have a fantastic week. We love you. 